Hi everyone, Chris Helby here with Waterline Boats on Lake Union in Seattle. I'm here in Laconer, Washington to show you an incredible sailboat. This is a 48-foot maple leaf made by Cooper Yachts Canada in 1975. Although this vessel is so tasteful and so well kept that it feels timeless. She is a solid and heavy hand-laid fiberglass hull, 48 feet long and 15 and a half feet wide. As you will see, she's very roomy. These dimensions also make this boat capable as a world traveler, or a super comfortable coastal cruiser, or an amazing liveaboard, or all of these. Don't let the beam fool you. With a 58 foot mast and just shy of a thousand square feet of sail, Maple Leafs are fast cruisers. There is so much to say about this boat, it would be impossible to fit into a reasonable length video. The exterior appears to be in excellent condition and all the exterior teak has just been reworked so it looks spectacular to me. The deck is, well, big and easy to walk around on. The side decks are also roomy for passing fore and aft. The durable Bullfrog dinghy with a 15 horse Honda on a sturdy looking electric davit system is worth mentioning. Good for crabbing and fishing for sure. Aft windows here let in light to the aft cabin, which we will see shortly. The cockpit enclosure is new as of 2011 and still appears new. This cockpit is fully enclosed, heated, and can easily seat eight people. The three large windows forward, along with the three side windows, spill gobs of light into the salon and dining area. First, we'll enter through the starboard side and take a look around on deck. Moving to the aft cockpit, you can see the two windows for the aft master suite and the entrance door. You'll soon see that with the door open, the aft cabin is wonderfully spacious feeling with a connection to the outdoors, yet private from the rest of the boat. The aft deck is also roomy and you can easily see here how transparent the new cockpit clear enclosure panels are. There is the stern light, emergency gear, and a rod holder. Heading forward the port side, you can see how wide the side decks are. Probably more than two feet wide, but I didn't measure them. You get a peek into the cockpit to the helm. We'll visit that later. The running rigging lines all come into the enclosed cockpit, so there is no need to go on deck during foul weather. Here you can see some of the hardware that makes that happen. Looking forward, you can see how much space is on the forward deck. It makes that kayak look small. The open hatch here is above the forward head, and with the aft hatch in the cockpit open, air moves right through the boat. So on a hot day like today, it was quite comfortable inside. The foremost hatch opens to the anchor locker, which is big enough to put crab pots and many other items, along with the 300 feet of chain and 150 feet of line. The foresail, a rolling furling Genoa, was new in 2006. From this view, looking aft, we can see the three bigger windows into the salon, the mast, radar, the spreaders, and standing rigging, all which appear to be in very good condition. Walking back on the starboard walk-around deck, you can see where all the lines run into the cockpit. We'll enter the cockpit from the starboard walkthrough. There is another one on the port side. As I said earlier, you can fit at least eight people in here. We can see that the cockpit enclosure appears like new and the teak is very pretty. Overhead is the Garmin GPS 740 touchscreen chart plotter on a 7 inch screen and the helm. Big windows give a clear view all around. Aft the helm is this great table and a big hatch which opens up to the aft suite. We'll peek in and take a look at the master suite from above. Taking a look at the helm and instruments, 
Most gauges are right in front of the pilot. With the link, digital speed, wind, and depth indicators very easy to read at a glance. Radar and the autopilot are just to starboard. On the starboard side of the companionway are the lines from outside. The hardware appears to be very heavy duty. Now we're going to step down into the salon galley area. Just to starboard is a navigation station. We'll look at that closer later. To port is the very well equipped galley with the double sink island making the separation to the dining area. It's all open concept though, so everyone is really in the same space, if you will. A full-sized, newer, overhead microwave oven. Lots of counter space. A newly installed freestanding fridge and freezer, and lots of light from these side windows. On the other side of the galley is the double sink, more counter space, and plenty of storage behind all the teak cabinets. Heading to starboard is the navigation station. We pass the steps leading to where we came from to our right. You can see that the interior teak is beautifully kept. The navigation station is like a small office. Take a look at the close-up of the table on our website featuring large format photos at boatshedseattle.com. This is a full-size desk with VHF radio, another GPS display, and the switches for four electric bilge pumps. To our left of the desk is a proper wine cabinet and more storage area. Heading into the salon area, to port is a very large fold-out dining table with an L-shaped settee. The fabric appears very clean and is a tasteful blue color. The headliner looks clean and all the overhead stringers are solid teak. You can clearly see here how the windows let light spill into every area here in the salon. The arrangement creates a feeling that you're not even below deck. To starboard is a bench settee complete with a bookshelf on one end and an end table with storage on the other and a movable coffee table in front. This is a cozy spot next to the fireplace-like stove on the forward wall. Peering closer at the dining area, we can see the shelf space behind the seating and how the dining area ties in with the galley. Music is piped into four speakers in this big salon. Moving forward from the salon is the forward cabin sleeping four on bunk beds. Each space has its own storage cabinet and reading light. A hanging locker is on the port side. Identical bunks are on the starboard side. Fully forward is the guest head, complete with plenty of counter space, cabinets, a large mirror, basin, and shower. Okay, moving aft from the navigation station on the starboard side is the walk-through hall to the aft cabin. On the starboard side, to our left, is the single pilot berth which is being utilized as a bench space here. Nine drawers offer ample storage space. To the right is the DC breaker panel. Entering into the engine room, it's important to note that this is a full height room. The six cylinder 120 horse Isuzu diesel is a factory upgrade from the normal 80 horsepower model. Access is clear from both sides. A workbench with a vise is on the far side and some of the electronics and plumbing valves are located here as well. Coming out of the engine room and moving further aft down the hall, we get to the master suite. The aft entry is all the way back. A quick look into the master head shows we have plenty of room. There is a window for light, a shower, a vanity mirror, and an upper mirror a basin, cabinet space, and of course, a manual toilet.
Below the two corner windows is the queen berth with a custom mattress. And finally, this four drawer teak vanity chest. Beautiful.